Howdy there, folks! How are y'all doing? My name is Reese, and welcome back to our Tech It 2 Let's Play adventure. This is episode 4, if I'm not mistaken, and at the end of 3, I said we would resume in the mines, and I wasn't joking. Here we are in the mines where I've just tracked down a load of gold. Wow, four whole pieces. Alright, maybe an exaggeration. I did find quite a few diamonds, though. Hopefully. The reason I say that is because there's these diamonds here. And this looks like a pretty good vein of diamonds. Looks like that's all of it, though. Didn't mean to do that. Didn't mean to be that aggressive. See, that's why you gotta be careful with the destruction catalyst. If you're not paying attention to what level it's at, you could be in for a, a wild ride. But we got some more diamonds down here as well. This is probably the closest I've ever seen diamonds appear. That can't be true. That's, in fact, I don't know exactly, but I feel like I've definitely had a situation where I found them closer together than that. And in fact... Oh, there's more this way! See, this is what's fun about mining with these awesome gadgets like the Destruction Catalyst and the Divining Rod, but it's also what's dangerous because you might find yourself down here, and I'm going to show you when we leave here. I did see the diamonds. I just want to make sure... Okay, that's not what I meant to do. See, again, the Destruction Catalyst, very dangerous. There's more diamonds in that direction. All right, well, we have things to do outside of the mine today, so we're going to go ahead and grab whatever diamonds are here, and then we're going to try to find our way out through the absolute mess of tunnels, and, and I'll show you what I mean, but uh, we've got a lot planned for today. And, oh gosh, see, we're out of space in our inventory. That's why we've got an alchemical bag. What I've been doing is throwing the cobblestone into lava anytime I find it, but we've actually got a, a, a quite a selection of things up here that we're going to hopefully get to today, as well as something... This is a natural system that we came across. See, I'm, I'm lost. I've got to stop talking while I focus on getting us out of here. We might have just run by. I think this is the connecting tunnel. It's all a little bit of a mess. <laughs> I've just been basically following the diamond signature. Walk up. Does it say there's diamonds in this direction? And then we just go that way. And whether or not that's the direction we need to be, you know, I mean, we just get further and further. Sometimes we get closer and closer to the ladder. But it's led to... I mean, it, imagine how long it would have taken to dig all of this out using a pickaxe. Even a very powerful one. Just imagine how much time it would have taken. And we got all this done in no time at all. Here we go. We didn't actually have to go that way. I know for a fact that had I been paying attention, this also connects up to here. Because, again, you just you zigzag back and forth. You're following that diamond signature. Like I say, though, I think last time... I, it might have been episode two, I said we we're going to upgrade our machines to automatically import and export, and we didn't get around to that, but we're going to do that this time, and I am particularly determined to do that because I've been down here many times, I've come back up with loads and loads of inventories full of items, and I've had to stand around and wait for them to process, and it's not fun, it's not fun at all, it's a pain in the neck, and I don't want to do it anymore. So we need to get some level of automation going. And I know there's going to be a bit of a hiccup. There's something else I wanted to talk about. And I meant to talk about this at the start of the last episode because that's when it should have been addressed. I'm sure some of you noticed it as well. And you probably had questions and you wanted to know, Reese, why didn't you not point this out? Folks, this is where a creeper blew up. And I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I meant to address it at the top of the last episode. And then I completely forgot. Yeah, that's why all of this is the way that it is. Hopefully that answers any of your burning questions. But now I will demonstrate to you why it is so important to automate these machines. Because look at this. We've got some gold in there from my last trip down there. But if I want to throw copper in there and then wait on that to cook up. Well, now I've just got all these other random blocks that I just have to wait. I just have to wait till it's done with the copper. This has cost me a lot of time. Oh, something else I should point out is that uh, even though we've got two generators... Uh, this one's not currently going, but it's been going in the past. Even though we have two generators and a solar panel, that is not enough to keep these machines running with more than four overclocker upgrades each. I know this because I made five new overclocker upgrades. I meant to make four so that each machine could have six, and then I overshot and went to five. But it doesn't actually work. It, it draws too much power. And the issue is not that our MFE can't output enough power, it's that we're not producing enough power. So once the MFE runs out, we're, we're sort of in a, a bad situation. So today, we are not going to be addressing that particular issue. We're more so focused on building import and export upgrades so that these things can be automated. Maybe adding energy storage upgrades so that the machines themselves 
connect as their own um, battery boxes, their own bat boxes, more or less. Swift Wolf's Rending Gale is the thing that we really want to get to. And folks, we could do that right at the top of the episode. Because if you have a look in here, we've got enough EMC to do it already. When we add 15 diamonds to the mix, that's only going to get us a bit closer. So I'm trying to very delicately maneuver through here and get the items that we can turn to EMC. Oh my gosh, look at that! Oh yeah, see, we're going to be doing great. Again, if you're not mining with a divining rod and a dist- No! <laughs> that's a fully loaded destruction catalyst. Let's actually, you know what? <laughs> Let's get rid of that right now at the top of the episode, because I don't think we're going to be doing any more mining. But we'll let all of this continue to process kind of in the background. And then while that's happening, we will go ahead and make Swift Wolf's Rending Gale so that we can fly as though we were in creative. So what are we going to need for this? First off, Iron Band. Lava, bucket, surrounded by iron. So let's go ahead and get the iron that we're going to need. We're also going to need a lava bucket, and I don't have one of those. We're going to just get a regular old bucket and then head down to the mine. See, if I was forward thinking... I would have done this while we were down there before the start of the episode. And if I cared about looking like I knew what I was doing, what I would do is I would stop the episode. I would go down in the mine, I would get the lava, and then we would restart the episode. And I would say, well, how do you And we'd do the whole intro again. But it's okay. It's all right. You know, you folks, you should know that I'm not perfect. You can see that I, too, have my kryptonites. Forgetfulness is the, the main one. Maybe not forgetfulness. Maybe not preparedness. Not planning aheadedness. One of those two. I did plan ahead, though. I've got a whole list of things that I want to do this episode. Things that I need to address with you folks. And so, I, I don't know. I don't know what my flaw really is. Maybe my one weakness is that I care too much. At least that's what it says on my resume. See, I can't wait till we get to building. So we can build a pop proper staircase. Or, is there an elevator? In this pack? Okay, well, we do have elevator track. That's not exactly what I had in mind. Maybe a lift? Okay, well, we know that there's teleporters. There's got to be teleporters. Yeah, the industrial craft ones. Very expensive to manufacture. Very expensive to operate. They use a lot of power. So probably not going to be using one of those. Ooh, a void ring! See, this would be helpful for mining, actually, but it's remarkably expensive. And by the time we have... One and a half million EMC to throw around. We're not going to be manually mining anything. You can hold me to that. You can hold me to that. You remember that comment, folks. And if it ends up happening, uh, what can I say? I, I make mistakes. Sometimes I just say things. Let's teach the lava bucket to the transmutation table. And we'll never have to do that again. And then we will get our iron band. And listen, EMC is the currency of this world. And we need to make sure that we not only have a healthy bank account, but also we have... A uh, store that is fully stocked. And to do that, man, everything you make, everything you make, always make sure you throw it in there so that you can get it again later. Because we might want to make more rings. Now, this is going to require a dark matter block or a block of diamond. So, oh, <laughs> we're making dark matter. So you're not going to have a dark matter block. <laughs> all right. All right. Sorry. That, I, uh, <laughs> We're going to need eight Aeternalis fuel and nine diamonds. The nine diamonds will make our block of diamonds. And then we will surround that. I'm sorry, I'm in a giddy mood. I'm in an excited mood. I've not been this excited to be playing a new mod pack in a while. And this is such a good one. I'm having a really good time with it. So now we're going to need feathers and more dark matter. So this is going to be a large chunk of our EMC gone, but not as much as I thought, not as much as I feared. I guess I could have done, you know, basic math and realized that we were going to be fine. Actually, we're kind of where we were at the end of the last episode, and we're going to have more EMC by the time we're done slowly processing all of the things in my inventory. So there we go, Swift Wolf's Rending Gale. On a pedestal, it shoots lightning at nearby mobs. <laughs> That's cool. Not really what we want, though. We want it for flight. Now, it has to be on our personage. I don't think we have a place to keep it. I wonder if it works if we keep it there. No. No, it does not. It has to be at least in our inventory, and it might even have to be on our hot bar. There we go. So, much like the Destruction Catalyst, this will consume EMC. Uh, in this case, or at least it's supposed to. Actually, I think in Tech at Classic, it was bugged so that it didn't. But it definitely should here if we fly around with it. So what are we on right now? 368? Let's go ahead and zoom a bit and we'll see whether or not it consumes any. I'm not sure what the actual consumption rate is. Yeah, 6304. 
So it is consuming the EMC. So you got to be mindful of that. If it runs out, it should work. And I keep saying this, but I don't think I've ever demonstrated it. If you have some sort of fuel in your inventory, like let's say coal, get a couple pieces of coal, we'll leave our Kleinstar behind. Yeah, it should run off of the coal. If I take the coal out of our inventory and it runs out, will we just like crash to the ground? Yes, we will. See, I'm glad I didn't zoom forward. Put that away, get our Kleinstar back out, and go ahead and fill it up again. But now, so long as we have Swiftwolf's Rending Gale in our inventory, we have the power of creative flight, which is going to be fantastic for us. Meanwhile, back over here, we're still dealing with the old school method of managing items inside of machines, which is doing it by hand. And it's time to stop doing that. It's time to get a basic export and a basic import upgrade. Except, there's a catch! I was checking the basic import upgrade and noticed it required a sticky piston, which requires slime or sticky resin. So there actually isn't a... Uh, 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 there, actually, uh, uh, there actually isn't a catch. I was going to be like, oh, we don't have slime, we can't make one of these, and then reveal the sticky resin as an alternative. And then I just kind of neglected to do that. So there goes all of my plans. Now we have not built, well, no, we have built a piston before, haven't we? Earlier on, I can't remember what for, but I'm pretty sure we did. Well, we're gonna build another one now because we don't have one inside of here, I don't believe. And then we're going to actually get two of them because we wanna make, actually, let's get a few because we're gonna need some import and export upgrades for at least two of our machines. And then, in addition to that, we're going to need some sticky resin. Again, at least two. I didn't notice if these upgrades had... They do not have an EMC value. So we're going to have to make them both manually. And then we also need some base upgrades, as well as some redstone torches. Now, a redstone torch is, yet again, something that we have not built before. But something that we can assemble quickly and get a near-infinite number of. I guess we need four total. Now, you'll notice that there was a couple of different options for these upgrades. One is this recipe, which requires two electronic circuits, a bunch of copper ingots, a mining pipe, or if you have a base upgrade, you can do that. Now, I made a bunch of base upgrades because I used them when I manufactured all of these extra overclocker upgrades that we can't currently use because we are not producing enough electricity. It's getting dark. Let's not even worry about sleeping. Well, it we won't be producing as much energy at night. I was going to say it doesn't matter because we've got a chainsaw, and actually, now that we can fly, we should probably let it get dark. Because we need to fight an Enderman so that we can get at least one Ender Pearl, and then we can EMC up some more Ender Pearls in the future. So, I suppose, actually, we'll do that. Anyway, like I was saying, we can manufacture these using basic ingredients and the base upgrade, which can be constructed as such. And we're actually going to be saving some materials because this would require two electric circuits otherwise, as opposed to the one that is in the base upgrade. So the base upgrades are fantastic. And we're, got, we're going to move these objects up here so they'll automatically be pulled from our inventory. And like I say, we want two of the exports and then also two of the imports. Oh, but we didn't actually make the sticky pistons. So we will make one of those and then two of them and then realize that we only needed to make one because EMC. It's the currency of the world, folks. It's the currency of the world. And we can combine that also with the base upgrades. I should have made more of them, actually. Uh, was there a recipe for using base upgrades? Yes, there was. Yes, there absolutely was. Uh, we want to make energy storage upgrades so that machines can store energy. I think we talked about that already, actually, now that I think about it. Anyway, that is our basic export and our basic import. And oh boy, have I had trouble with these in the past, but hopefully things will go better for us today. Now, we could build some regular chests. But what if we did something a little bit different instead? See, I've been planning on upgrading our chest game for a while. Even though we don't have much need for chest because everything can be stored in the transmutation table, we do still have some items that require chest and a double chest. <laughs> that chicken. <laughs> it's phasing through the lid. Uh, the double chest takes up way too much space. We can shrink that down to half if we got serious about things here. So if we surround this chest with iron, we can get an iron chest. And the iron chest is cool, because the iron chest is like a double chest that you only need one single solitary square for. But what if we took it even further, and we did something really wacky? 
Like, we took that iron chest and we surrounded it with gold to get a golden chest, which is like an iron chest, but bigger. And then what if we took that concept and we went even wackier with it? Because, folks, believe you me, we can. If we have a look at uses for this by tapping U, glass and diamonds will get us the diamond chest. And then we can surround that with obsidian to make the obsidian chest, which is nigh on indestructible. Also, if your computer's a bit of a beefcake and you want to stretch its technological prowess, you can surround it with glass to make a crystal chest where you can actually see what's inside of it, which is kind of cool, but also kind of wild. I don't know how I feel about that one, actually. Uh, let's go ahead and grab the glass, and then I think what we're going to do is we're going to make the diamond and then the obsidian chest, because then it'll be indestructible. And, I mean, as you've seen, we've already had issues with creepers blowing things up once already and I don't know if we really want to risk that again. So, did we even show you the inside of the golden one? Yeah, well there's the diamond one. And then I don't believe it gets any bigger with the obsidian. I think it just gets destruction proof and it looks cool. And it does look cool. Come on, you gotta admit that it looks cool. So we'll teach that to the system. It has a pretty hefty EMC value of 28,000 but my goodness, look at that. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So while this charges up in here, we'll come back over here, break these chests, plop this sucker down. Excuse me, you're very much in my way right now. I hope that you realize that. You probably do realize that. You probably realize it and you think it's funny, don't you, you little chicken? Sorry, I don't know why I was getting so frustrated. Now, we could make obsidian chests for all of our chest needs, but that might get a bit ridiculous, and I think we'll just stick to iron chests for right now. Okay, so here goes the tricky part. You'll notice that we made the basic import and export upgrades. I think the difference between these and the regular ones, because there is a regular, it's just called the import upgrade and export upgrade, is that these pull one item at a time, as opposed to the upgraded ones, which I think do entire stacks. But the upgraded ones also consume energy. These will not. Now, I think we have to program these in a way. And I'm trying to remember how it works. So if we look at this, it says north. So if we right click on it, set direction to south, <laughs> okay, and then if we shift right click on it, it'll do the opposite. So I think the way that this works is we want this to pull items out of this iron chest right here, and then we're going to put another one on top of it, uh, although we should probably actually take that one down because we need to be able to right click on the top of this thing. So yeah, I didn't really think that one through. Get that out of there and we'll just break that real quick so yeah see this is how the fence got blown up this happened and i didn't realize that it happened oh gosh see even that time i knew it was about to happen i thought the chainsaw would one shot him i don't know it, it works on animals creeper chainsaw massacre what achievement yeah okay anyway i'm sorry i keep getting distracted we need to stay focused here we want this to, with, uh, with this basic import upgrade, we want it to import from a chest that's over here. Which I think means we right-click, set direction to south. Does that mean- no, 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 no. Set direction to north. So shift right-click, and that means that a chest to the north, it'll automatically pull items out of. Possibly, we'll find out. So we'll go ahead and take that basic import upgrade, we'll plop it down. Well, we'll put it right there, why not? And then, oh! Oh, we're running out of room for upgrades. It didn't even occur to me that we wouldn't have enough room to add an import and export upgrade, as well as then also adding a a, uh, um, uh, a storage upgrade for energy. So, hmm. Well, we might be able to get away with using hoppers. In any case, that is currently set up. Let's get some ore. Do I not have any? Oh, there it is. Aluminum ore. And so we'll do our testing. We will put that inside of here, and it automatically got imported. Okay, yeah. So if I want a chest on top, I'll get on top, I'll look down. Basic export upgrade will hold down shift and right click, and it says direction two up. Then we will put that inside of here. We will put down another iron chest on top. Hmm. Just to confirm, though, the input does work, and it works wonderfully. Oh! Oh? Oh! 
Oh, it might only work with things that have just been processed. Wait, oh, it's a butterfly. Sorry, I heard a zombie dying, and then I saw a butterfly, and I got panicky. So let's throw aluminum ore in there, and let's watch it. It might not have exported it before, because it had already finished it. And it might only export finished items. Oh? Oh. So it exported one of them. And it exported one of them. <laughs> Wait. Wait. What? <laughs> It's only exporting half of the items. Why? Why is that what's happening? Oh no! Okay, well you know what? I feel pretty confident that I get the general idea so we can set it up thusly. So we've got our basic import. We're gonna shift right click there. And uh, we'll put down our chest. We'll put in our basic import. And we'll, we'll put in the tin dust. Oh no! What did I do wrong now? Oh, that's the compressor. Ay, 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 okay, all right. Goodbye, compressor. Store all of that inside of here for now. Basic import upgrade, shift right click there. It's okay, so it's gonna pull items in to the south. Shift right click up here. Send items to the north. We will put down our two iron chests. We will put in our two upgrades. Take out that iron. Uh, we'll swap those around for no particular reason. And then if we put in the tin dust, the tin dust should automatically get pulled into here, be processed, and be automatically put out the top. So that's working. You, though. Why? We might have to make the full fat export upgrade. Now, fortunately, we can use a basic export upgrade to build the super export upgrade. That will consume electricity. I don't know how much power that consumes, but uh, it's unfortunate. Alternatively, something else we could do is we could come over here. Oh, good. We've already got some iron. Uh, I think we might need one more iron, and then we also need... Our, no, you know what? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I think it's actually five. And then we also need a chest. Because we're going to build a hopper. Which is so much more simple and straightforward and universally uh, loved and appreciated. I should aluminum over there. And we might just be able to use that. See, a hopper was my alternative plan all along because we need... if if, if It's going to take up all of our upgrade slots, right? And what we really want to do is we really want to have the energy storage upgrade as well. So if we can use a hopper on the top here to feed items in automatically, which we don't know yet if that'll work. But uh, yes, it does work. But what if we take out the... Yeah, okay. All right, so that's good. So that will work automatically. Uh, happy to see that. So we're going to need a re-battery and some of these advanced circuits that we have built before. So fortunately, not a difficult recipe. Let's see whether or not this fixes our problem. So once again, we're going to do... Well, we're going to do import from this side now instead of export. So, excuse me, butterfly. Butterfly, if you wouldn't mind... You're, you're, okay, you know what? I'm going to put this... You're, you're literally in my... Wow! That is one sturdy creature that takes two whacks from a chainsaw. I feel bad about that, but it really left me with no choice. We've got our export upgrade there. Let's find out, first off, whether or not I set that up correctly. So that should do, I believe, a stack of 64 in one go, which means that it should easily handle the two that we get from this machine. I feel like it should work with a basic export. I feel like that's a bug that it's not. Because sure, it can only take one item at a time, but it should take the next item. Unless I'm doing something wrong here. I don't think it requires any sort of redstone signal or anything like that. But this works, and this is fine. You know, that little bit of extra power it's consuming is not that big a deal. And we still have room left over for our energy storage upgrade. So we're actually going to do the same with this machine. Because, again, energy storage upgrade. So we'll want to take out the, the basic export. Which works on this machine because it only ever outputs one item at a time. And we'll set that to export to the south. Well, I've shreked up there. Export to the south. I believe is what we want. And then we'll put it in here. Now, I could connect these so that they automatically, you know, items that are dumped into this chest are sent into this machine instead. We could just move the electric furnace to be next to the macerator. They don't need to be either side of a generator anymore. That's largely unnecessary. Uh, I'm not going to do that, though. Mostly because I don't feel like it. It's also handy to not have them automated because sometimes there are some things that you want to macerate but then not cook up. 
or things that you want to cook up and you don't want you know the the hopper to be filled with macerated items you know it's nice to have a little manual control in some regards hey the export's not working that's because that's an import upgrade that that's probably why set that one up but that one in there and now it's working good oof what do we want to do next I'll tell you what, we're going to continue with upgrades and then we're going to finish off with objects that I need to do my home renovation. We're going to build two of these, so we'll need two re-batteries. And then uh, we would need an electric uh, electronic circuit and copper cables. But because we already have basic upgrades, again, super simple recipe. Uh, you can't go wrong with either of these unless you do the one with silver ingots because that'll cost you more EMC in the long run than the one with the copper because the copper just costs a lot less uh, than silver does. I guess this this mod wasn't necessarily built with the idea that you would have EMC and you'd be confronted with, with that sort of an obvious choice. But there we go. Two energy storage upgrades. So this should increase the amount of storage. And I completely forgot to, to hunt for Endermen last night. I completely forgot about that. There we are. So big energy storage upgrades. According to the GitHub page for this mod, each of those shouldn't increase the internal storage of each of these machines by 10,000 EU, which is useful. And that's not European unions, my friends. So I'm going to put a obsidian in there. And we're going to find out whether or not obsidian dust has an EMC value. I don't know what I would need obsidian dust for, but I know that in the past I've needed obsidian dust as part of industrial craft as it happens. So we'll just hang on to that. And now I am going to go with my pork and hunt for Endermen. And we will resume normal episode things. Oh, I need a Klein Star. There it is. Don't, don't know how it ended up in that chest. We are on the hunt for an Enderman. Oh. Looks like the portal caught on fire. Oh. Oh, interesting. It's got, it's got, like, Goku hair. Um... <laughs> our ender... Our ender portal... Our ender portal has gotten edgy. Hey, now's a good time to demonstrate how good our armor is, because I've fallen in the lava a couple of times. Look how, look how it just tanks that damage. It's pretty decent. It's, it's helped me survive a lot. Oh, gosh, there's a lot of things over here following me now. I'm kind of curious about, uh, let's, let's go cool off in the river if we can. Because being on fire, even though we're going to survive it, it's kind of unbearable. There we go. It's very loud. It's very annoying. Do we need to go to the, to the, to the nether? And find out if there's something weird going on in there? Let's not. You know, the last time I was doing a Tekkit series and the, the nether portal started changing, it was bad stuff. Let's avoid it. I'm sure it's nothing. It might be part of the mod pack. We never know. It never. It could be part of some sort of nether upgrade. Anytime you build a nether portal, it just automatically starts to expand and spit out lava. What well, doesn't matter. Right now, we're looking for Endermen. The issue is I'm not seeing any Endermen, and I know that even if I do find one, there's there's a likelihood that it won't drop an Ender Pearl. It it seems like every time I start a new mod pack, the first Enderman I kill just has no Ender Pearls for me, which would be an unfortunate state of affairs. Oh, you know what? Oh, I was gonna say we should equip our shield if we're gonna be doing uh, combat with, with an Enderman, but I don't have my shield. And I guess we don't really need it. We've got really decent armor on. I sort of ditched our Talisman of Repair because both of our tools are now energy-based, but now that I think about it, we should probably hold on to it for the armor, because the armor does have durability. We've gone pretty far afield here now. If you have a look at our map by pressing M, we're a ways away from... Oh, you know what? We should probably put down a marker or something. Oh, we can put down a waypoint. Oh, wait. Can we teleport? What? Oh, my gosh. I'm assuming that's because we have cheats on. I turned cheats on at the start of the series so that I could uh, fly into the air and get pictures and things for thumbnails which we use, I think, in the first episode, and then never again, because every other thumbnail... Oh, there we go, an Enderman. That's kind of cool, though. We, we still need to put a mark down on where our home is, 
And maybe we'll have to set up a rule about using that because it's a bit broken. We should attack it with the chainsaw. That's the tool we should actually be using for this. Come here, you. Hold still. Gosh, it's so fast! Where is it? Okay, we're gonna have to just land and kill everything. Stop it! Yeah, see, they didn't drop anything, as expected. Come here, you nasty! Oh, that was pitched combat, and still nothing. At least I don't think. Yeah, nothing. Oh, darn it, the sun is coming up. Oh, come on! That was an entire night and we found two Endermen? I don't really need Ender Pearls for anything in particular. Uh, I just know that we will need them in the future, and I was trying to be mindful of the fact that when it gets dark, it's a good time to go Enderman hunting. We got a good chainsaw, we got some decent armor. We need to get that knocked out, but never mind, I guess. Uh, something we were going to do before I got distracted by the fact we could teleport was open this up. Right click, new waypoint, home base, and we're going to give it the color of Howdy Folks, which is kind of blue. Not that blue. Not really that blue either. That'll do, though. And we want it to appear in the overworld and nowhere else. Oh, gosh, we can change the icon. Oh! Okay, this is fun. Which one of these says home? Oh, that I mean, that one's literally a house. So I guess that one says... It's so small! It's so small! There, there, has, to, there has to be a way to change that. Max distance... Death points... Options... All right, well, I mean, really... Whatever, it doesn't matter. Gonna make another arguably unneeded one for the nether portal. And you folks let me know whether or not you think using the right-click teleport to is cheating. And I will decide whether or not I'll use it in this series based on your feedback. Oh, that'll get annoying, won't it? <laughs> that'll that that's gonna It's gonna grate on me probably. If we go on M waypoints, we can disable this waypoint. There we go. I'll leave the portal one open. So that is the energy storage upgrade out of the way. I think we're still going to be mining manually for a little bit. So the alchemical bag is a bag that holds a lot of things. We have to build an alchemical chest in order to build it first. And the alchemical chest was the chest I was talking about, where you can place inside of it a talisman of repair or a repair talisman, and it'll automatically repair tools that are inside of it. So that's a potentially useful thing to have. So the recipe is pretty straightforward. It is one of every type of covalence dust, a diamond, two iron, a chest, and two stone to build the alchemical chest. And the alchemical chest can also just be used as a storage chest. It's not in my... I don't... Okay, it, it's pretty big. I think it... Ooh, is it bigger or smaller? We'll have to do math. Okay, I've got the numbers for you. I did counting and then basic arithmetic. So this chest has a nine by 12 grid, whereas this one has an 8 by 13 grid. That means that the total storage size is 108 for this chest and 104 for this chest. But here's the kicker. One of these is much cheaper. So obviously the obsidian chest will be more than the diamond chest, but the diamond chest is still 28,405 EMC, whereas the alchemical chest is a mere uh, 9,000. Where is it? Hold on, I didn't actually put it in there. Let's break that sucker. Uh, 8,987. So it is not quite as dense by four additional storage spaces. That, literally, that's it. But it's so much cheaper. It might make more sense economically to have these instead. But is it blast proof? I don't actually know. We're all gonna find this out together. Let's get that, let's get a button. Let's go test it. It's the sort of thing we do in the mines, isn't it? It's where we tend to blow things up. So we got our chest, TNT, button. It is blast resistant. Can confirm. It's funny because that's not even what we built it for. Uh, we blew up a segment of ladder just then. We built it so that we could use it as a stepping stone to the bag, which is going to require more high covalence dust as well as white wool. Now, there are other options. We can actually make it any old color we want to if we wanted to have something more fun or festive, but I don't really care. White looks nice and clean. Could be brown. Could be green. Doesn't matter to me. We're going to combine our chemical chest with some wool and some high covalence dust to get the bag. And it does have a value, which is handy. So inside of our inventory, Look at that. That's going to make mining and collecting items when we're on the go 
so much nicer, so much easier, so much let's get more stone. I don't know why. So when we go back into the mines, we'll have that going for us. Now there's three more items up here, and I didn't really intend to build either the first or second item. So the first item that we have up here is the static charge pad, which will charge items that have uh, the use electricity that use EU that are in our inventory. I don't really want one or need one at the moment. Uh, we don't use them enough to justify it. I can just throw them in the MFE if I need a charge. We also have the standard world spike, which I think will... It, redstone will be disabled, but it will load chunks to keep, I guess, everything else going, which could be useful. And I didn't really plan on building one, but I guess we might as well and just test it. Oh! Oh! Oh, we did need an ender pearl for something. I knew it. I knew it. I guess we won't build one of those then. Well then, on to building the chisel. It is literally... <laughs> All right, it's, it's, it's iron and it's a stick. So we're going to go ahead and build the chisel. The chisel has durability, so it will break when used too much, which means you might want to create the upgraded version or alternatively... Just make sure that you either have a transmutation table to get lots more of them, or make sure you get yourself a talisman of repair. Alternatively, if you have a diamond, you can create the upgraded version, which also has some benefits to it. Uh, nothing that's really applicable to us and what we're going to be doing with it, but it has some advantages. For example, if we had some stone... Oh, wait a minute, we do have some stone. It's inside of here. If we had some stone and we placed that down, we could right-click it with the chisel, uh, shift right-click it, left-click it, that's the ticket, to change it to a type of chiseled stone. And there's actually many different options in here, but as you can tell, it does require that you click them all individually, whereas this bad boy here, check this out. Oh, actually, we have to open the UI for that, and I guess you should demo that as well. Hold down shift and right-click, and that brings up your chisel UI. You can put your blocks in there, pick a block that you like, and then click. We now have 10 stone bricks from stone. Very handy. This one, though. Shift right click. What is this? You can choose to have your chisel work in a 3x3 square of blocks or a row, and then we can convert all of these beneath us with a single left click to make them mossy, make them cracked, make them chiseled, make them chiseled differently. Even more differently chiseled. We can turn them into bricks, it looks like. That looks like a fine brick foundation. That looks like... Like a, like a nice driveway, actually. So that is useful if you have blocks on the ground that you would like to convert in some manner. I want to get them back to something that is EMC-able, which would just be regular stone. What am I do What am I wasting my time on here? I can just collect these, and then I can do it inside of the UI. And I really had no intention whatsoever of making the diamond one when the iron one exists and works fine. But now that we have the diamond one, we might as well use it. And that is everything that we needed to get started on the Great House Re... That is so concerning over there now. Like, I am I am so concerned about that. Get my ring back down here. There's so many random objects we're carrying around with us now. It's a bit of a disaster. But that is everything we needed now so that I can build my awesome house. I have the ability to fly. I have the ability to make really cool looking blocks. It's time to no longer live out in the open. It's time to build a really cool looking base, and we're going to do that next time. Thank you folks for watching. God bless each and every one of you, and I'll see you later. Bye! Just kidding, we're not going anywhere yet. I'm determined to kill an Enderman and get an Ender Pearl before we end this episode. You dirty little devil loading in a massive hole in the world. You know that I have. I'm risking a lot coming out here. What if the game crashes and takes my world with it? Some kind of invisible barrier back there. I can't even reach him. Where? Why am I attacking him with that? There's so many spiders! We still don't have our shield for some reason. Why didn't I bring our shield? Not that it would help, because I'm, I'm attacking with every swing. There we go, he's dead. He still didn't drop anything, did he? <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh my gosh, is there a, a better volcano? Right over here? Because it kind of looks like there's just a better volcano. Unreal. I feel like a madman just puttering around with a running chainsaw. Looking specifically for Enderman. Come here, you. Come here. Got him! We got him, boys! We got him! We even killed the creeper by accident! Not even paying attention anymore! Let's get out of here! Okay. Enderpearl.
Nice! What else do I need for the standard world spike? We need an ender pearl, we need four gold, we need two diamonds, and we need two obsidian. And that'll give us the standard world spike. Now, I don't know how many chunks this loads, I don't know if this requires power, I don't even know if this thing works. Oh, so it needs fuel. World spike fuel. That's interesting. What kind of fuel does it... I mean, will it take Mobius? Or I'm sorry, uh, uh, yeah, Mobius. No, it won't. I wonder if it needs some sort of exotic fuel. Well, alright, we can't use it. But we did build it. At the end of the day, that's what matters. Comment down below if there's a better one. Till next time, thank you folks for watching. For real this time. God bless each and every one of you. And I'll see you next time. Bye.